Hello. In this project video, we will explore data on the popular British TV show, Doctor Who. This data set was featured on the weekly community data project, Tidy Tuesday. In this one hour pair programming session, we start by recreating a bar plot from an online article about the show that displays viewership for each season of the show. We build the visualization iteratively, discussing the details of the implementation at each step of the way. Then, we improve the visualization to a line plot that better displays the trend in viewership over time, annotated with the various actors who played the main character, Doctor Who, each season, allowing us to explore whether viewership was related to the actor. We assume some familiarity with the R programming language, as well as with the tidyverse, and particularly using ggplot2 for data visualization. If you'd like to follow along with the video, grab the R Markdown file titled Doctor Who in the project repository and code along with us. Alternatively, you can work through the R Markdown file on your own and refer back to the video when you need a little help or inspiration. Remember, there's no single right way to create these visualizations. The goal is to get practice and learn some new skills along the way, not match either the visualization in the news article or the ones we create perfectly. Let's get started. We hope you have fun. So welcome everybody. My name is Mina Chetinkarondal and I'm a, a professor at Duke University and we are trying something new starting today um, and we're calling this coding out loud. So the premise is that I will be pair programming uh, with a buddy um, and I'm lucky enough to have uh, one of my students with me today, uh, Evan Dragic. Um, and Evan, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Evan. Uh, I'm a junior at Duke studying psychology and statistics. And yeah, I'm super excited for this opportunity and to see what we can create today. Yeah, so uh, we've been doing data visualization all semester. So I think today we're going to mm -hmm. take uh, another opportunity to do, do more data visualization together. And the idea is that uh, with each of these episodes, we're going to have a kind of a set of tasks prepared for us, although we haven't really completely prepared for these tasks. So part of this is us kind of uh, coming up with ideas on the fly, uh, but we'll try to keep a little bit of a structure and then provide each of uh, you and our markdown file that you can code along with us along the way or um, grab it at the end and kind of uh, go through and watch at your own pace if you like or just work on it on your own. So uh, <laughs> let's start with the first. Um, so our first episode, we're going to work with uh, data from Doctor Who. And for those of you who may not be uh, familiar with where this data actually comes to us from. It's a project called Tidy Tuesday, which is a fantastic project. They release a new data set each week. So this was last week's data set. So it gave us a little bit of a time to think about what we're going to do um, until we got started. So if you want to follow along, I would recommend going to the short link bit.ly uh, slash coding dash out dash loud. And that will land you on this uh, landing page for the um, coding out loud project. And you can do a few things here. Um, if you would like to follow along on our Studio Cloud, as in you just open an RStudio session um, in your browser uh, with all the packages you might need installed for you, go ahead and click on the first link here. Um, it will ask you to authenticate if you go with that route. Or if you would like to do things locally on your computer, uh, you can go ahead and find the source code on GitHub. So if you click on the second link, it will land you um, over here and you can start with the R Markdown file if you like. Um, I am going to do the computing in our Studio Cloud here, um, and I've basically grabbed that R Markdown file uh, that I have prepared um, for us to get started. And let's go ahead and, I guess, get started. So yeah. um, um, what shall we do first? So the first task we were thinking about was looking at this uh, news item that was about the fall of Doctor Who <laughs> or the ratings. Um, yeah. <laughs> and this was the visualization they provided. Um, so we were thinking we might want to recreate this. How might we get started with this? Hmm. Let's see. So um, what sort of data do we have too? That was the first thing I would kind of look at since it looks like we have multiple data sets. Right, that's great. So let's take a look at these data sets. So these are the two data sets we're going to work with. So I am going to go ahead and load the packages I need. Um, and then 
Let's close this up. I am going to set some chunk options and let's go ahead and load our data sets. So we have two data sets. One of them is called episodes. Let me go ahead. I generally like to open those up in the data viewer. Um, and in this data set, we have things like the season number, um, the date it aired, which mm -hmm. looked like we had dates, years, right? And then nice. the viewers. So these are in millions, I believe, the viewers. So if you look in the uh, data folder, I have linked to the data dictionary uh, from here. So we may want to have that open in another tab as well and do that. So in the episodes file, so we have uh, UK viewership in millions um, and we have the season number and the date. So I feel like this might be the file we're going to work with. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, and I have included that visualization here in the R Markdown document as well, so we can easily refer to it. But let's go ahead and insert a code chunk. I am using the visual editor for our markdown because um, I enjoy the look of it. Um, usually when I add a code chunk, I like giving it a label. Maybe viewership. Okay. So um, we have the episodes data. What might we want to do with this data? Um, are... the first thing I notice, yeah, is that we're going to need some sort of year, whereas we had that air date in the, um, data set. So right. we would so... have to mutate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's yeah, so go ahead and mutate and figure out the year here from the first aired. Um, yeah. so let's mutate and get a year in there. Um, so that's going to be some function that we, um, what was it? First air date. Right? I think so, yeah. First aired. First aired. Um, and we might use that year function from the Lubridate package to do this, but mm -hmm. I don't think I've loaded the Lubridate package. So let's go ahead and do that too. All right. And then whenever I do this, in order to see what we actually have, I like doing relocate, and then we might relocate the year and the first aired um, to the beginning of the data frame so that we take a look to see if those look right. And mm -hmm. I'm going to do one more thing. I would like to see my chunk outputs in the console just so we can print those out as a tibble here. So that looks right. We have years yeah. and we have seasons. And then um, this visualization is looking at series averages. So how would we calculate mm -hmm. the averages yeah. per year? Um, we're going to need to do a summarize. But what I think before that, what's really annoying is that 2012 and 2013 get lumped into the same entry uh. on the chart. Right. So, so let's I take a look at what might be going on here. We might take a look to see um, the distinct um, years and season numbers. Mm -hmm. Pretty long. So how about we do pipe this into a view. So open it up here. So season one is in 2005 to Oh, so this span, they, they span a little bit, right? So we need to figure out, it maybe like starts in one year and goes into the other. So we need to figure out, I guess we the visualization seems to be by year. So maybe we keep things by year? Yeah. Mm, or maybe, maybe it is that the visualization is based off of, because what was the visualization saying? 2012 and 2013. Um, so season seven seems to have spent three years. Interesting. Um, yeah. And then some of these are NAs. We're probably, if there's not a season number, we're probably not going to use them. What might be happening there? Let's try to figure out what these NAs are to get 
rid of them. Yeah. Let's see. Um, we have some things that are called specials that specials. are not in any season. So maybe we want to just get rid of these specials first. How about we filter those out? That sounds good. Okay, this is a little easier to look at. Ah, and now mm -hmm. that we have no, removed yeah. them, things are looking good, except this one season that's spanning across the two. So maybe we just recode that to be just those two numbers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, the way I would do that, yeah. So if we just had um, it, uh, mutate year was year first aired, and then also mutate would be year equals if else year right. um, in uh, 2012 or 2013, then um, then we would call it something else, 2012, 13. Yeah, yeah so. That's good, year so in, 2012 or 2013. Vector. Maybe we do this, 2012, 13, like they did it there. Yes. And otherwise we'll say it's it can just be the year. Yeah, just keep what it was. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay, let's so see. let's see what this does. Hmm. Oh. False must be a character vector. Ah, so what's going on here is that we have made this a character, but the year itself was numeric to begin with. So how about mm -hmm. we first this force this to be a character as well? I think it should stop coming. I should solve it. Perfect. Okay. That's looking really good. So now yeah. we have season numbers and years, and now I think we can get rid of these kind of debugging code that we had here, and we're going to do the summarization. But before we summarize, we should do a group by, right? Yes. Yeah. So get group, group by, by a new year variable. Mm hmm. And then. Summarize. And then we, um, yeah, mean rating or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. What was mean that called? UK viewers. UK viewers. Yes. Um, oh, you were trying to tell me. Give your very uh, yeah. <laughs> name, Mina, and you are right. <laughs> okay. Um, good. And awesome. 2021 is an NA, but we don't need it, right? We don't need yeah. 2021 to recreate this. So how about we filter that out too? Okay, we have the data that we're going to plot. Um, it is not like exactly the same data. Maybe it is. These are rounded mm -hmm. to one digit. How about we round these to one digit? Yeah, perfect. Round. Let's try again. Mm, and the words of my former <laughs> boss. Close enough for science? It seems close <laughs> enough. Let's try to make the plot. I mean, it's not exactly the same data, maybe. Six. Right, we have a couple data points that diverge like it for at the very end, but otherwise they seem close enough. So let's go ahead and make this plot. Yeah. How do we want to go about that? Awesome. So uh, the first thing, yeah, starting with our like base GG plot call, um, mm -hmm. we've piped in our data, so we don't we're not going to need to specify that. So we can just start with the right. mapping argument. Um, and it looks like we've we're going to have uh, on our x-axis would be that um, mean UK viewers variable we just created. Mm -hmm. And then on the y is going to be year. Year. Okay. And um, then we can go ahead. Geom. And... Yeah, so what we can add plus. Uh, how about geom call for a geom call? Geom call. Since right. the default there is to use the identity rather than to do a transformation mm -hmm. like bar. Yes. And what do we have here? Awesome. Something looking similar, it's but 
it's reverse. So let's reverse things. So we can say um, for cats, we can do reverse this year factor for me. There we go. Awesome. Oh, it's great. Yeah. So now what can we do? My favorite theme yeah. <laughs> will help us <laughs> a long way. Of course. Here. <laughs> um, a few other things maybe we might want to do. Do you want to try to grab this blue yeah. somehow? Totally. Let's yeah. try that. So I like using this yeah. digital color meter. All right. Help me remember this hex code. 0081BB. Yes. Zero, zero. Perfect. Ah, uh, that, that uh, mistake again. We that's should use, my favorite um, error to make. <laughs> Phil. Let's use Phil. Okay. Let's use Phil. Okay. Awesome. So we're getting there. Um, I, I would say that yeah, we have most of the things, but what else do we need here? Um, we're also going to need a geom text since they have those right. labels with the uh, year at the end. Yes. So let's do that. Geom text. Um, so we have our X and Y coordinates that are already mm -hmm. going to get inherited from the ggplot call, but we need a label and that label should be what? Um, so not quite exactly the year column of our data frame because we need that and then the M. So we could do a paste zero year M. Right. Not year. I mean, mean UK, UK viewers. viewers. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah, the other yeah. Variable, yeah. So let's do that. The mean UK viewers and then M. Okay. Awesome. Um, probably want to move them over a little bit. So I think that's a nudge X. Uh, and it's, I, I would have used H just, like, but that works too. Oh, okay. Let's try that. H just. H just equals one to pull them to the end. One. Maybe the other way. Is it zero? Wait. Is it? There we go. Zero. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So we move them over. Um, they look bolded. I think there's a way to bolt yes. this. Um, I think we need the GG text I package. Remember. I don't think so. Hold on. Let's okay. see. Yeah. So, so oh, wow. you are right. That if we want to bold like things like the title and stuff, I think we're going to need the GG text package. But for just the text itself, I think we can use this font base. Yeah. I did not know you could do that in base GG plot. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Look at that. Um, cool. We're missing a plus, so we gained our gray background back. Okay. All right. What else might we mm -hmm. want to do? I feel like these are nudged a little bit still, right? There's still a little bit of... Um, uh, um, oh, like yeah, you're space right. Space between... Go, but awesome. when I nudge them, ending up with that pesky thing that happens where you see how the 7.9 M gets like clipped at the end. So, oh, yeah, just a little bit. I think we can do chord Cartesian, yes, clip off to save us from that. There we go, we gained the tail Perfect. of the M. Yeah. All right. What else would you like to add to this? Um, the other big thing I see is that on the original plot, the years are like flush with the bars as well on the right side. Mm. Whereas we kind of, we have theme minimal, but then it still leaves that gap where like the ticks and the grid lines would be. So yeah. I'm not sure if the, yeah. So I'm let's sure see. So first of that. all, let's get rid of these grid lines. Okay. Uh, we can do panel grid element blank so we're we're building up onto the theme minimal um and get rid of these grid lines because they don't have it on the original graph um so one way to get these flush well 
Okay. I if mean, you like cheating. Oh, um I got a question. Oh, we have a we have a comment. The numbers don't match exactly. You're right, Lisa. They the numbers do not match exactly, and we are not sure why. So we decided to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um particularly because actually I'm not necessarily sure that the data that was used for that particular article was exactly the data we have. Yeah. That's, um, I was impressed it even aligned this much. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So I have an idea for getting those numbers there. Okay. But we're going to cheat a little bit. Maybe there's a better way, <laughs> but is it, like is it cheating, theme void? And calling them in Geom text. <laughs> right. Something like that. I was thinking, okay, yeah. can we actually do um, something like, yeah, how about we do this theme void? Just get rid of get everything rid of and then put them in the ourselves. Labeling and then put them in ourselves. We already know how to do Geom text. So let's copy that. Um, and then we're going to do the years, right? So the label will be yes. year this time. Um, and then let's get rid of these things for now. Okay. Awesome. That's not at the right place. They went to their X coordinates are being inherited. So how about we do X is zero. So now they're yeah. there. We can do a bit um, more. Maybe that HS trick you had. Perfect. Okay. And now, how about we give ourselves some room for that? Add an X limb from maybe negative mm -hmm. one to. Yeah. That Zoom was out a bit. Perfect. An unnecessary amount. Maybe <laughs> 0.5, maybe 0.5. And maybe we do this like a, a little bit of room. That is starting to look a lot more like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. really good. Okay. Shall we try the title? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's try the title. So oh, the title itself is easy enough, right? What is it? Doctor yeah. Who TV ratings. Mm -hmm. And then what was it? Series average. Mm -hmm. But that is not how it looks here. So we have yeah. this bolding <laughs> situation happening. How do you want to handle that? Um, I would do that with the GG text package that would let us mm -hmm. um, specify HTML elements within like our title and stuff. Right. Yeah, so let's let's take a look at that. I, I agree with you. I think that's the way to go. GG text. Um, so let's go to the web page for it. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I want to do my favorite cheat of just like looking. Is there any? Okay, some text in bold. So it looks like we can put markdown code in it. Um, and then markdown elements yeah. right so for example it looks like we can add like here they gave the example of plot caption but we should be able to do that with plot title and then mm -hmm. we're just going to use this element markdown so a few pieces to carry over first we want the gg text package okay and then we want to add our markdown text. And then we want to say plot title is element markdown. Awesome. There we go. There we Great. go, yeah. Yeah, um, let's tidy things up a little bit. So I like having theme things at the end generally. Yeah. Um, and then maybe this chord Cartesian towards the end as well. 
Um, we might want to add a caption just to be good, oh, yeah. right? And say, um, recreated plot from independent.ie. Um, not all values match. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could make the bars right. less wide too. This is the other kind of big thing that jumps out at me. Maybe like oh yeah equals 0.75 for those. So here, yeah, like this. Sure, it's there see we go. How that does. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we have mostly gotten here, and um, oh, and there is also the lines. Do you want oh, to yes. the lines? Yes. Um, would the best way just be geom h lion? Uh, we could try that. Let's try it. So geom h line and then y intercept would be like is it like, is it like 10 or something? 10? I don't know. Okay, that not okay. 10. 11, 13, 13. is uh, too much, um, uh, 12.5. That should be yeah, perfectly right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did it, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so we got one there. Um, I'd say this is, you know, fine. Yeah. We got pretty close to what we wanted to get to. Some of our values are off, um, but... I think that's looking good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Now, the next thing I was thinking we might do is we might want to improve upon this a little bit um, because, I mean, we recreated this, but this news story is about the fall of viewership. Mm -hmm. And to me, my eye goes from bottom to up. And it doesn't look like the fall of your viewership. Yeah. It looks like the rise of viewership, which is That's um, a really good point. quite, you know, and, and another thing is we have some years, but they're on the Y axis. And I feel like with a timeline, we may want to have them on the X axis. So what sort of a plot, what sort of a geom could be better to like indicate the fall of viewership? Yeah, I think we could do a geom line and because there's mm -hmm. this is a case where that would be really appropriate because we do have that temporal data. So usually if you had categories, yeah. you wouldn't want to imply that there's, you know, slopes or differences. But in this case, that's exactly right. what we want to do is map that trend. So, right, exactly. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll I'll enter a new R code chunk. And this is, what did we call the first one? The first one we called series viewership. So how about we call this one series viewership improved maybe? Yeah. And so we have this data set that we created, right? That we basically mm -hmm. want to plot in another way. And earlier, we just created this data set and then piped it into ggplot. But I want to reuse this data set. So what I want to do is I am going to break up this pipeline. Um, and create a new data frame for this mm. data set that we use to plot, right? So for this, that has the information we want to plot. And then this data frame can be used to make the first plot, but then it can be used to make the second plot as well. Awesome. So what do we want on the x-axis then this time? Yeah, now we're going to have year. And now we're going to have we will... year. And then on the y, you would have the, um, what do we call that, this average? UK viewership. Oh, mean yeah, UK viewers, mean yes. UK viewers. Awesome. And then we said geom line, right? Yes, that should be a good starting point. Uh, 
the hmm. each group consists of only one observation do you need to adjust the group aesthetic yes i want to say yes. connect all the dots together so group equals one there we go perfect yeah okay so now you know yes overall <laughs> we are um seeing like this decreasing trend except 2018 yeah. was very popular yeah, it's like what happened um, in 2018 I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, maybe in the next bit we'll be able to figure out because we'll take a look at the doctors that change. So I'm not a huge Doctor Who fan, but I did look <laughs> things up a little bit. And um, doctors change from uh, across certain seasons. Not every season, but some seasons. Um, so let's make this theme minimal. And how about we bring that blue color back in? Yeah. I like it when these lines are a bit thicker. Okay, now um, we are seeing the trend a little bit better, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, we can borrow some stuff from above, right? Like this uh, labels, we can totally borrow. Um, um, would you want to add a geom point? years too just to emphasize that even though there is a trend that's like discrete points yeah i think that's a really good idea so let's do that um let me go ahead and borrow this theme element as well so we can get that markdown title there we go um so yeah let's add a geom point as well Awesome. Uh, maybe we should make those blue. Yeah. So here's something I like to do when I make plots like this. I don't know how good a practice it is, but those dots and the points to me somehow like blend in. Um, so one thing we could do is we could cha change the shape to be, what is it? Open circle or something like that. Maybe it's oh, circle yes. open. Maybe it's circle open. So we could do this, but then you can see the line through it, which I don't really like. So a trick that I like is to actually keep the filled in points, but then make another point on top of it that's white. Oh, wow. Yeah. These are being layered on, so it's almost like with a paintbrush, you can go in, yeah. but make the size of that a little smaller. So now you get something like this, um, which to me looks like now I can see the points a little bit better. And, you know, we can bring those um, uh, values back into the mix as well of the DOM test. Yeah. You can cheat off of the code we developed before for the labels. Maybe we don't need them to be bold this time. Um, um, let's get rid of these along adjustments. The y. Yeah, let's see. So by default, they're like this. Where do we want to move them? Down, left, up? Um, um, I think up would be better because when I look at that 8 million in 2018, like if we move it down, it's still going to be obscured by a lot right so. yeah you're right so um that's why look at that yeah okay good so now um, we have these um some of them are still on top of the lines what if yeah. we move them over this way too maybe a little bit of a oh, yeah. X. um maybe Minus point five. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's get rid of the Y. I think this okay. works somewhat. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um I don't know. We could like play with this forever, <laughs> but I think that um, at least we can. Oh, but look, we have lost this again. 
where there yes. was this um, 7.9. So let's bring this trip back into the mix. This way, the uh, geoms are not clipped. Okay. So now we have awesome. things. Um, we can add the labels or not. You know, maybe we don't necessarily need them, but like right now, the X and Y labels don't look very nice. Um, yeah. I would say that the X is obvious that they're yeah. ears, um, but maybe um, for the Y, we may want to say UK viewers in millions, something like this. Okay. Maybe not like. Oh, I'm missing a comma. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'd... So now we have this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we need axis, like on the Y axis, like for those six, seven, eight, if we're going to specify the, um, as well by each point, but I think that's oh, definitely a choice. Of, like say yeah. that there are millions. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or even just having any, um, like other than the title, just those axis, axis uh, labels on the Y axis, if we're going to label each point individually. Um, we, do you want to get rid of the numbers six, seven, and eight? Is that what you're saying? I, or do we want to I think so. To them? Yeah, let's try I, that. We, we can could remove add. those. Um, so that would be axis. Text, I think. Axis text Y. I never know. Is it axis title or axis text? There we go. Does yeah. that look good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so. If we're going to specify it on the points, yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this is looking good. I think that we're able yeah. to get, you know, a little bit better. So, like, kind of taking a look at this visualization versus this visualization, the idea of like, there is a fall in viewership, except this like big bump <laughs> here mm -hmm. um, is looking um, a lot more obvious to me. So let's do one last thing. I think maybe we'll have just enough time for our task three. Um, so as I said, there is um, across some of the seasons, the doctors change. So I found this on Wikipedia where so the show was you know a show back in the okay maybe later wikipedia um back in the 60s all the way to 80s and then the data that we have is from the revived era so these are the seasons that we have data for and there have been different doctors so 9th 10th 11th 12th and 13th um and so we're at the current 13th doctor right now um so what i did is i clicked on these and took a look to see who the doctors are. So you can kind of um, see from here. Uh, so the ninth doctor was this person. Um, and then the 10th doctor, I think this is the only David Tennant. This is the only season I watched Doctor mm -hmm. Who, I think. Um, and then currently uh, we have actually a woman doctor. Uh, the 13th mm -hmm. doctor is Jody Whitaker. Um, so what I did is I created a uh, table with the season number, the doctor number from Wikipedia, and then their names. Okay. So I was thinking, can we maybe add this doctor information to this plot that we have just to see how viewership has changed between doctors? How might we do that? So we now have this one data frame that's doctors. And then we have another data frame that is um, episodes. And there's the data frame that we did make, which is the series yes. viewership data frame. So that's mm -hmm. probably the one we want to. So we know the year and the mean UK viewers for our ser series viewership. Um, the series viewership was made off of the episodes data frame. And then we have this doctor's data frame. How might we bring all of this information together? We got a we got a suggestion in the chat to use color coded mm -hmm. points. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 
That to me says we got to grab the doctor's names into that series viewership data frame, right? Mm. Somehow yes. we need to match them. The thing is, the doctors, in order to match the doctor name, I need the season number, which is mm -hmm. in the episodes data frame, but we didn't carry it through here. So how about we go and bring that back in first? So let's scroll Sounds up. Good. And when we created the series viewership, we ended up with, because we grouped by year and then um, calculated the mean UK viewers. And then when you do that, you lose all the other variables, right? Your summary table mm -hmm. just becomes year and the new variable you calculated. How about we say keep the season number as well? Mm -hmm. um, so let's do this. And let me take a look first to see. Um, So we do have the season yeah. number, year, and mean UK viewers, um, except Summarize was doing this thing where it tells me, hey, I am still a group data frame. So let's drop that. So that doesn't do the whining. OK. So my ser series viewership data frame is now um, season number, year, and mean VK, UK viewers, and my doctor's data frame is now season number, doctor no, and doctor name. So now um, we have this. Okay. Um, and we have a couple suggestions for different color points or different color lines. So how about we start building that up and then we can try both and see what we want. Awesome. Yeah, so... Um, Let's copy all of this code. What do you say? Yeah. Because we're going to add good. basically one more aesthetic element to this, right? Mm -hmm. Insert a code chunk. And we'll call this series viewership improved with doctor. Sometimes these labels become so long. And so <laughs> x-axis is year, y-axis is uh, UK viewers. And we want to maybe do color by doctor name ultimately is what we want. But in order to be able to do that, I need a data frame that has all of this information. Yeah. So yeah. what do we want to do to bring them together? I, I would do a left join. So okay. by left, that means if we're going to have series viewership, we're going to keep everything from there because we want to keep all the seasons. And then you essentially mm -hmm. match it with that, like use the key of that season to match it with the seasons information that we have about the doctors, and then it'll combine it mm -hmm. all together. All right, that's great. All right. Uh, so now we have all of this. Okay. Like yeah. we kind of have the info we need now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we can do better in terms of the visuals, but we kind of have what we need. What are some improvements you might want to make to this plot? Uh, let's see. Um, definitely, uh, formatting the legend, I think. So, um, I mean, yeah, so like giving it a title, like doctor name. Yeah, let's do that first. Sorry. This should be doctor, maybe, so that that's that. It's bugging me that it's taking up so much space, to be honest. Yeah. Um, um, so how about we move it into this empty area we have here? Oh, good idea. Yeah. And... I mean, that's the sort of thing like you can only figure out once you see the plot, right? But we can say legend right. position. So the way we define this is think about it as like zero to one for the X zero to one for the Y. So let's see, what if I do it at point one for both of them? It's too low. Move it up a bit. Point two, point three, and then move it over a bit. Point two. So like that's looking that's okay, good. maybe. Yeah. Um, so right now that color 
is getting, um, so our points aren't colored by those. Um, only the text is colored. Do we want the points colored? Yeah, I think so. How about yeah, we so the, remove this? What does that look like if I do that? And then maybe we good. just like change the line color to be something a bit more muted. More muted to gray 80. Okay. Yeah. So that gives us something. We can maybe get rid of these white points now. Um, and then right now, both the text and the um, points are using the same color, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. But we probably don't need um, the, yeah. the, like the letters here. So for the geom text, I'm going to add show legend false. There we okay. go. That's a lot cleaner. Yeah. Um, now, a few accessibility things we may think about. We now have color, but we know that mm -hmm. this is not a very colorblind friendly color plate, maybe. It's the default yeah. one. So you want to use the maybe that Okabe Ito color scale. Oh, yes. What is it? That's in the color blinder package. Yes. Yeah. And how do we do that? Where do we do that now? Um, we that would be um, scale uh, color, Okabe Ito, right. I believe it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not one of the ones Ito. where you have to say discrete. Yeah. Cool. Right. And then now yeah. we have color indicating something, but let's add shape as well, um, just so it's like some sort of double encoding. Um, so it's both color and shape. Um, now it's split uh, our legend into two because of here. I think we have to give them the same name so it knows to put them back together. Exactly. So that's looking yeah. better. Um, and then that yellow is like super difficult to see, right? So how about we darken this color scale a little bit? Maybe that's nice. better. Yeah. I don't like those shapes um. though. Like the plus <laughs> and the other one. Let's see. Ooh, a good point in the point, yeah. uh, comments. The order of the legend doesn't match the order the dots appear. Very good point and really frustrating situation. Yeah. Um, the legend we... is, of course, in our favorite order, alphabetical. What do we want to do? Do we want to go back to that triple we made and make it a factor so we can specify that don't just assume this will be alphabetical like this is the actual order we want them in right yeah and what order do we want them in so we could manually give the order but really in this join data frame right over here yeah. once we do the join the order we want them in is actually governed by something like season number right right um so how about we try this for the doctor name so let's mutate doctor name to be ordered by season number would that work yeah but yeah. now we actually have them in the same order um, and, and then these pluses are like really hard to see, I think. <laughs> um, so we may want to grab some other shapes whenever I need more shapes. I just like going to the ggplot2 web page and then find this aesthetic specifications article and just do a control F for shape. But which of these shapes might we want? Like these ones look um, better, right? The filled in ones? Yeah. So 15, perfect, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So let's try that 15 to 19. Yeah. 
So that would be a scale shape manual where the values are 15 to 19. Oh, I forgot plus. a plus. Okay. Um, but that gives me two circles that are so hard to tell apart. Yeah. Yeah, that size, I don't know. And especially because they're the two blue ones just happen to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right, let's make one of them eight. I don't know. Yes. Let's... So let's do eight and then 15 to 18. I made the first one eight because there's only one of them. Um, that True. doctor only played one season. What's your problem? Ooh, Identical units is object is not a unit. Maybe does it not like, I don't know what the issue is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah. Well, we have some stuff that we have managed to do. Um, we may want to do something like make these a little bit bigger or no, something like this. Now, one of the things that we may want to do at this point, I think we're going to run out of time before we do our <laughs> task four, which is perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and knit this document real quick. I am going yeah. to say, um, preview and viewer pane so we can see it side by side because some of those adjustments we made uh when we knit um might you know um move around a little bit depending on the size of the image and stuff so i want to make sure they look good in our final document uh, yeah especially with like whenever nudge and h just you always have to make right. sure it looks how you want your output like like here, I remember thinking the text was way bigger in the viewer pane, but now that it's bigger, it's right. smaller than the bars. So, uh -huh. yeah. All right. So that's looking okay. Maybe this is looking okay. Let's take a look at this. Maybe this is looking okay too. So yeah. one last thing that we may want to do before we wrap up this, our markdown document is, um, let's go back to our document outline. So we did a recreation and we did, we created this. How about we write some alt text for this um, visualization? So nice. um, just so we can kind of improve the accessibility of it further, um, and also, I personally find it useful to write these just to make sure that I also know what I made <laughs> in a way, even if I'm like working in a meeting where I don't need to write a caption. So what would be a reasonable um, maybe alt text here? Something like we like to say what sort of plot it is, right? Mm -hmm. So bar so, plot, plot of uh, um, mean uk view, doctor who mean uh -huh. viewership uh between 2005 and 2020 um that may be something about then, the trend so maybe uh, we can say something like in 2005 average viewership was five point no seven point nine million And it decreased steadily to 5.4 million in 2020, except then we can mention the exception. Mm. Yep. Except for bumps up to 8 million in which years? 2000. Uh, eight and then 18. Eight, 2018. Okay. So, um, yeah. And then mm, let's copy this and then let's take a look at the next plot we made. So if I, um, so this time this is not a bar plot. This is a, a line plot, a time yeah. series plot. I was going to say, I wasn't time sure if time series. series would be. 
is a time series line plot of mean UK viewership for Doctor Who. Um, and then the rest of it is similar. Um, like here, for example, we can see better the really sharp decrease between yeah. 2014 and 2015. Um, and then we may want to copy this one more time. But here, for we may mention that, right? Um, particular sharp decrease observed uh, between... 2014 and 2015. And then here we have the one with the doctors. And I think in this case, we have lots of information um, that is actually hidden, um, you know, in the, um, sorry, lots of information that's actually hidden in the visualization. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to want to add that information in. So we have this. Um, but also indicates the doctor, yeah. the, the, act, the artist <laughs> that played the doctor in each season. Um, and so now we want to write this sentence for like season one was Christopher yeah. Nicholson, so on and so forth. Let's cheat. That's too much writing. <laughs> so what if we say, okay, we want to create a new column. I'll just call it text. That is paste. Um, season and then it'll be season number and then is played by and then this would be oops awesome and then i wonder if we can do what happens if we do this Okay. I mean, I'm not sure that this is um, like great, but we can yeah. um, we can maybe uh, manipulate this text just a little bit um, in the few minutes that we have left. So here is what I would how I would do this. Um, I am going to open like an empty text file here. I'm gonna paste this. I'm going to get rid of um, all of this. Let's go to the very end. Um, season two to four is played by David Tennant, right? Mm -hmm. Seasons yeah. five to, what is it, seven? I guess I should say R. I'm sure there was a better way of doing this, but um, seasons eight to ten. And then seasons eleven and twelve are. So now we can do um, this and bring this back into our alt text. So we have cheated a little bit. I guess I had to still do a little bit of manual intervention. But it was still easier than writing people's names, I'd say. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Um, so now we can knit this document one more time and then see how things look as we wrap up. Yeah, this comment in the chat to um, use a geomerect in the background for the different doctors. That's definitely a really great uh -huh. idea. And that's what I'd want to do if we had more right. time. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. We could have kind of colored them in. Well, maybe that's a good segue into kind of wrapping things up a little bit here. Um, if you would like to keep playing along with this data set and maybe implement some of the suggestions in the chat, um, or if you have suggestions of your own, or if you feel like tackling the last task, which was about episode descriptions for which you're going to need the IMDB data set. Um, if you go back to the homepage for the project, you'll be able to to either get a link to the RStudio Cloud project or see the source code on GitHub. And what I will do after this, um, after we wrap things up here, is push the code that we developed into the GitHub repository and place it in the RStudio Cloud project as well. So you can take a look at it and you can keep playing with it yourself. And if you do actually um, create something and you want to share it with us, maybe on Twitter, uh, we would appreciate it. And um, yeah, I think that's it for this. Did you have anything awesome. else you wanted to add, Evan? Oh, no, yeah, this, this is just really great. Yeah, to see everything come together like that. And it was really cool. So yeah, thank you so much for yeah. having me as a guest host. <laughs> well, thank you for joining as a guest host. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break, even though we just started for the holidays. But we'll be back on January 11 with another guest host, Holly Kui. Uh, and we don't know what the topic is going to be yet. So, um, you know, follow on Twitter or something uh, to figure out closer to date what we're going to be working on that day. And thank you so much for joining. This project was an opportunity to practice your data wrangling and visualization skills. If you liked it and want to practice some more, check out the other project videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.